Hi, so we're just going to give you a little peek into what we're doing at the moment for The Two Towers, the second Lord of the Rings film, which is um, obviously occupying us all <laughs> morning, noon and night at the moment as we um, hurry to get it finished in time for its December release. So it'll be great to show you folks a little bit of what we're doing. The title of the two towers refers to the Tower of Orthanc, which is where Saruman, Christopher Lee's character, is based, and the Tower of Baradur in Mordor, the home of Sauron, and the two are in alliance. And it's the moment in which Aragorn has to decide whether or not he is going to really embrace his, his destiny as the king of men, because this is a time when mankind needs its king. It's a story of genocide, to some degree, of these two evil forces deciding that the race of man, mankind itself, must be eliminated from the face of the earth, and they attempt to do that. Film two, like uh, every film in this uh, trilogy, is a challenge. <laughs> and uh, will remain so until we deliver. It's great, it's a, it's a great movie. It's gonna be bigger than film one. The scale is larger, but the focus on the individual characters and their struggles um, is a lot more intimate. It's the ring. It's getting heavier. So much of the story is about friendship, and I think what Two Towers is about is what happens then when you, you lose your friends. Merry and Pippin are off, you know, doing their own thing. Frodo and Sam are off doing their own thing. You have Gimli and Legolas and Aragorn doing their own thing. You've kind of established these very important characters in the first movie, and then the Two Towers allows them to kind of explore their own journeys. There are new cast members, some significant new cast members that join. There's Theoden, the King of Rohan, who's played by Bernard Hill. And what will you have me do? Look at my men. Their courage hangs by a thread. His niece is Eowyn, who's played by Miranda Otto. She's sort of grown up in a world of men. She's been brought up to fight, she's been brought up to ride, she's... she is surrounded by men, and yet she's not allowed to be a man. At some level it stops and she gets left at home because she is the only daughter and because she is a woman they want to protect her, but she doesn't want to be protected. Eowyn's brother is Eomir, who is played by Carl Urban. He walks abroad, they say. There's also Faramir, who is the brother of Boromir, who was played by Sean Bean, and Faramir is played by David Wenham. There's Wormtongue, played by Brad Dorif, who is essentially the advisor to King Theoden. But not all of the new characters in the, in the Two Towers are actually played by human beings. So now we're going into the motion capture stage. This is just in a little quiet industrial part of uh, Wellington. But through this door is where Gollum is being brought to life. Go on through. All right, how are we going? The character of Gollum is a completely digital creature, but I was determined that I wanted an actor to actually create the character. In this case, it's Andy Serkis. Obviously, he creates the character through the voice. But also, we're doing a lot of Gollum as motion capture, which is when Andy Serkis wears a suit covered in these little dots, and he performs Gollum, he says the dialogue, he plays the scenes out just as he would, and the computer is able to capture his movement and translate that to the digital version of Gollum. Andy was also there on the day that we were shooting the scenes with Sean Astin and Elijah Wood, and so Andy was playing the scenes with them on set. The stuff that I'm doing on set is more demonstrating to the animators. Obviously, the animators are going to be able to create a lot of subtext by a look or a blink that the character does, you know, that I won't actually be so much a part of, you know, because that's their, their domain. Um, but I'm trying to indicate to them how I see the character being played on the floor. And often we use Andy's original performance that was photographed on the set and we do the animation over the top of Andy's performance. Gollum is probably the most actor-driven digital creature that which has probably ever been used in a, in a film before. So while uh, Elijah and Sean were off filming uh, all of their sequences with Gollum and Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli, were getting acquainted with the Rohan. 
we were down in the South Island. This countryside, this landscape was just phenomenal. The Two Towers introduces the country of Rohan, which is a country inhabited by human beings. Very Viking-like, Norse sort of based. And Edoras is the capital city of Rohan. Tolkien describes Edoras very vividly in the books as being a city of wooden buildings on like a hill in front of a range of snowy mountains. When we were originally doing our location scouting, I, I said, look, we've got to find somewhere in New Zealand, there's got to be a hill like this that's in front of the mountains that we can find. So they went helicoptering all around the country and they came back with a photograph of the absolute perfect hill. It was about 60 or 70 miles away from the nearest town. It was in the middle of the South Island. It was very remote. The only option was to pretty much build most of Edoras actually on this location. So we spent about seven or eight months actually constructing these huge buildings on top of this very, very remote hill. The end result was that in the movie we have an Edoras which is, which is thoroughly believable and I was able to go there and just shoot as if it was an existing location. The major action set piece in the Two Towers is the Battle of Helm's Deep. And Helm's Deep is, is, a, is a large stone fortress. Um, it's set up a narrow rocky gorge. It's not a strategic castle, it's actually it's a, it's a refuge. It's where the people of Rohan go and have, and have protection at times of war. But in this particular instance, the Urukai, who are led by Saruman, they are intent on killing every man, woman and child in Rohan, and so they set a huge army against this fortress of Helm's Deep. We shot endless night shoots. I think there were about three or four months' worth of night shoots. Vigo Mortensen, who plays Aragorn, and Orlando Bloom, and John Rhys Davies, who are all, are all involved in this battle, they worked week after week after week. It was a very intensive time. To shoot more than two weeks straight of night shoots on any movie is a long time. It was so well constructed, and we were so involved in what we were doing. I didn't feel the outside world really at all. That foundation was so instrumental in us getting lost in the story, and I think an audience is getting lost in it. We also built a miniature of Helm's Deep, but what was interesting was that it wasn't just a model, it was a huge miniature. It was a quarter scale, but it was in itself about 30 or 40 feet wide. And it was so big that we could just photograph it with our cameras and it wouldn't look like a miniature, it just looked totally believable because of the sheer size of this huge model. And we were able then to put little computer-generated characters on the walls and in front of the castle, staging the battles. <laughs> We developed a, a computer program called Massive. It's a way in which every little computer person has their own brain, and they basically are not animated. They simply massed in armies, and then we press a button and they just go and fight themselves. They make up their own decisions about how they want to fight. And we use this program to some degree on the Fellowship of the Ring. But in this movie, it really comes full force against the inhabitants of Helm's Deep when 10,000 massive driven CG Urukai are marching down the valley towards the castle. How many? 10,000 strong. Let them come. It's three movies, but it is one story. People are anticipating the next chapter and what happens to these characters because it becomes much more dynamic. Uh, and much darker and, and, in my opinion, much more interesting. The stakes keep getting raised higher and higher and higher, and it gets more and more perilous, and it should be more and more adventurous. I wait with great anticipation as we hold out to see what the world's audience are going to think of the two towers. Because the first film has been hailed as this incredible visual epic, but that's nothing compared to what's to come. There's nothing we can do for Frodo. The quest will claim his life. The ring will not save Gondor. It has only the power to destroy. If we do not trust the strength of men, then we trust to the victory of Sauron. Rohan is weak and ready to fall. And so he will strike hard and fast at the world of men. War. Is upon us. The story, my precious.
So that's a little bit of a preview of the two towers which is going to open in a couple of months time and um, I hope you've liked what you see and look forward to seeing you at the movies.